Hello, welcome to Jason Old Millennial. My name is Jason, speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. In today's video, I'm continuing my series on, uh, I am ranking all of the best picture winners, which are 95 at this current moment. I've seen all 95, so I am going through the whole list. Uh, this is thanks to my older sister, Abby, who won an Oscar contest last year, and she got to pick a, a series for me to do like this, and she picked the Oscar best picture ranking. And that's what I've been doing. I haven't done it in a little while, I'm trying to pick up and uh, I'm right in the middle of the ranking. Basically, I am going to be covering number 55 through number 46 on my list. So stay tuned to see what that is here on Jason, the old movie. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well here on a Sunday uh, evening. Um, had a pretty good weekend. I did a five-hour stream yesterday on um, Townsend, Townsend 909's channel. We talked about Queen, me, uh, Nick, and Briar. Uh, yeah, five hours talking about, or we ranked uh, ranked all 15 Queen albums, and yeah, it took about five hours to talk about it. So that was quite a, quite a stream. Um, got to talk a lot about Queen, got to listen to a lot of Queen. It was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, so now today we are, um, I'm going to be talking about some more Best Picture winners as I'm somewhat of the Oscar uh, aficionado uh, around YouTube, my, around the community. Um, if you want to know anything about Oscars, you can ask me. I, I, I studied it quite a bit over the years um, since I was probably like, you know, 13 years old. Anyway, so I do love watching movies that get Oscar recognition just to see what is the movies that is um, popular for that year, you know, and Oscars is the biggest uh, award show of the year to kind of show what the, what the I guess the movie community thinks is the greatest movies of that year they don't always get they don't always get it right though I have to admit sometimes they they pick movies that uh, do not stand the test of time some are popular but I just don't quite get and looking at my list uh, 55 through 46 there are three pretty big movies on my list here that um you're probably gonna be like how is that not higher on your list uh, it's a little bit lower, and I'll give my reasons why, but uh, I totally get if you're like, wow, those should be the top 10. The, the, all three of those movies probably should be top 10 uh, movies, but for me, not quite as much. So we'll get to our first movie, um, and, not, uh, and the first um, is the 55th um, ranked movie on my list, and that is going to be the movie Around the World in 80 Days, which won Best Picture in 1956. Um, this is obviously an adaptation of the famous Jules Verne novel that's been adapted so many times. In fact, I used to grow up watching The Three Stooges around the world in 80 days. Uh, I, I love The Three Stooges and they made a, an adaptation of it. Uh, recently there's been, uh, I say recent, it's been a while, but there is an adaptation with Jackie Chan in it, in it which I, 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 I kind of quite enjoyed that version, in fact. But yeah, um, this time we got David Niven in the lead role, which I like David Niven a lot. He, I think he's a really good actor. Uh, I think he does a good job in this role. It's not really a big dramatic role. It's really more of a lighthearted comedy, I would almost say, venture movie. And I do like the whole idea of um, traveling to different... Because I love to travel. <laughs> if you remember, I traveled to all in Europe uh, this last summer. And yeah, I do love traveling, going overseas and all this. So I do love the traveling aspect of the movie, of him um, going... To, in fact, the first half of the movie, I think, is actually quite good. Um, I enjoy all the, like I said, all the traveling aspects. David Niven, David Niven's very good. And a lot of the situations are, are interesting. Um, but then the, the big problem in the movie, I think, and everybody would agree, is that the movie slows way down towards the middle part of the movie. I remember this one part where they go to Spain, I think, and they watch like a bullfight scene or a bullfighting, you know, uh, thing. And uh, it, it goes on forever. You just see these bulls, you know, keep, you know, charging this guy, you know, I forget what you call him. But um, that, that does, that scene does drag on quite a bit. So there are scenes like that that's like, wow, this could have been shortened up quite a bit. Maybe it would have been a much better movie. And again, it's a decent adaptation of the book. I haven't read the book, but, you know, overall, decent adaptation compared to what I've seen before. Uh, but I don't know, it doesn't seem like a best picture type movie to me, but anyways, but very popular, of course, one best picture in 1956. So that's my 55th, um, ranking there. Number 54, this is definitely one of the big ones that I'm sure it's in top 10s of most lists. And I'll give my reason why it's here. And this is Schindler's List. 
at number 54. Uh, this is one best picture in 1993. I remember this because I was, you know, 10 years old when this, um, or nine years old when it came out, when one best, or I guess probably about 10 years old when it came out. Uh, and obviously this is the movie about the Holocaust, which, I mean, uh, what is the most difficult subject matter to make a movie about probably it's probably slavery and Holocaust Two really hard to make movies because it's just so hard to watch those kind of movies. Um, very painful to watch them. And Steven Spielberg is a master. He's my favorite director of all time. Uh, this was a big one for him because it was the first one where he won the Oscar for best director. And of course, it won best picture and a lot of other Oscars, uh, great cinematography, black and white cinematography in there. Um, you get Liam Neeson before he was Qui Gon Jinn. That's when I first knew Liam Neeson. Um, so good performance by Liam Neeson playing Schindler, the lead character. You got like Ben Kingsley in here. Uh, Ray Fiennes uh, really does a great job playing a horrible Nazi. I mean, just the worst. <laughs> you really hate Ray Fiennes in this movie. Of course, he go on to do like Voldemort and stuff like that. He's he does, he does good at playing villains, and this is probably the worst villain that he's ever done. Um, and there's some really hard scenes in this, a lot of, you know, murdering going on. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, that all of that happened there. That's just absolutely horrible to think about. And you see it actually happen. It really, you know, you really forget that you're watching a movie and you're thinking this, you're watching real people getting killed, you know. Uh, and it's just very emotional and very, yeah, heartbreaking to watch. Um, done extremely well. I mean, I don't think he can do better than, uh, than uh, Steven Spielberg at this. Uh, you know, great performances overall. Uh, now the reason why I put it at 54 is just because it's a movie I, I've watched one time, I remember, and I just can never watch it again. Uh, in fact, sometimes it's been on and I'm thinking, oh, I should watch that again, you know, because uh, I watched it, you know, probably 20, 25 years ago or something like that. I was actually in, I think it was in high school and it was on TV and I watched it and yeah, it just kind of almost scarred me <laughs> for life watching that movie and so I've never gotten around to going yeah I want to watch that movie again so the rewatchable factor is pretty much zero on this movie which I kind of take an effect of if how good a movie is is a movie that I want to watch over and over again and so this is one of those weird ones where it's like it's a very good movie it's done very very well it's a very important subject matter like I almost would say everybody should watch it at least once just so you really kind of get that in your head like what how terrible this whole thing was and but because of the unwatchable factor, I put it this low at number 54, but it is a good movie. Number 53, um, another very popular movie actually that I, I don't quite like as much, and that is Unforgiven, which won Best Picture in 1992, a year before Schindler's List actually. Um, this is a big Clint Eastwood movie. This is the first one where he won Best, uh, best Director. Uh, he directed and acted in it. Um, he was nominated also for Best uh, Actor. He got pretty good cast here. You got Morgan Freeman also appearing here, and they both would appear again in Million Dollar Baby. Morgan Freeman's always great. I always enjoy seeing him in something. Uh, Gene Hackman is great as the villain character. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a Western. It's one of the rare Westerns that wins Best Picture. Not too often you see Westerns win Best Picture. Um, but Gene Hackman wins an Oscar for Best Point Actor in this role as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of good stuff there. Like I said, there's some grittiness to this. It's definitely a, you know, it's not a, like most Westerns kind of are about, you know, the, the gunfights and it kind of glamorizes, you know, all that in the Western. This is one where it's like, no, gunfights are terrible. Killing people is terrible. Uh, it's a little more, um, looks down on the Western, you know, genre in a sense that it doesn't look very high or not highly, but doesn't. Doesn't make it look that great, you know. It makes it look kind of dark and disturbing <laughs> in a sense. And I guess that's why I'm not a big fan of this one, even though I think Clint Eastwood's great in it. The acting is great. A storyline's not that strong to me. It's just this guy who's um, coming out of it. He's basically kind of coming out. Coming out he used to be a, like a terrible murderer, and, and then, but now he's like settled down and he's taking care of kids. His wife's dead. And then he gets a job to go take out... Um, a gang that like uh, uh, cut one of the prostitutes or something and the prostitutes are raising money anyways it's yeah it's a very weird plot to me anyways and like I said it's a real dark movie real gritty I don't know I don't have a lot of fun with it and you're not supposed to I suppose but 
I don't know, it's not one I've ever gone back to watch again. Uh, though I know it's, like I said, it's pretty popular, usually pretty high up on lists, I think. But for me, not one I've gone back to watch again. Um, but that's why Unforgiven, uh, you are unforgiven. No, I'm just kidding. Um, at number 53 here. Um, number 52, here's another huge one. This is a massive one. I think it's one of the top 10 most important movies ever made, but not one I ever can watch again. And that is Gone with the Wind. Yes, Gone with the Wind. Huge, probably the biggest Best Picture winner of all time. Won Best Picture in 1939, of course. Um, huge year uh, with Wizard of Oz coming out. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Um, considered the greatest year of all time. The movies, Gone with the Wind, one of the best epics of all time, or biggest epics of all time. Very popular book turned into movie. It sold like crazy. It, I think even today, it's the best-selling movie of all time if you take inflation into account. Um, I think sold more tickets than even Avatar or Titanic. Uh, like, yeah, it was hugely, hugely popular. And it's this epic movie set during, like, the Civil War era. You got racism in here. Um, anyways, and it kind of tells this kind of story that takes over a fair amount of time. And, it, yeah, and you got a huge cast. You got Clark Gable. I mean, Clark Gable, I think this is his best performance. And should have won Best Actor. I, like I, when I watched this, or when I did watch this, I always thought, how did he not win Best Actor for this role? He, this is the when I think of Clark Gable, I think of this role, Rhett Butler. I mean, he is so good in this in this performance. Uh, you got Vivian Lee playing oh, it's called O'Hara, and she wins the Oscar for Best Actress for this. Um, you get some other people like Olivia De Havilland's great in it. Um, also want to point out Hattie McDaniel, um, who is from Wichita, Kansas, my hometown that I uh, was born in and grew up a little bit in. Uh, she wins the Oscar for Best Point Actress, first black actress, first black um, actress or actor to win an Oscar. And she won for Best Point Actress. So, you know, I always love, you know, talking about, you know, we got a girl from Kansas was the first one to break that color barrier. I, was, I always think that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so a lot of great stuff here. I think the cinematography is absolutely amazing. This, uh, I would say, I love the scene where you see like they sh they have a close up of somebody in the battlefield, like, or there's all these people that are injured because um, they're in the Civil War, and you see them on a cot, and then the 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 shot pans backwards, and you get to see the scope, and you see more people, more people, and you're like, holy cow, how many people, you know, are on these cots? You know, uh, it's a great you know cinematography scene. Um, lots of extras. Uh, costuming is amazing. Scarlet hair wears um, just really cool dresses and this whole thing. Because uh, they're like these southern, you know, she's rich. And I think she's kind of part of the wealthy class and they're in the south. So they're wearing these nice, you know, the southern dresses that really poof out. And those hats, you know, really cool. Um, and then the, um, the art direction is absolutely amazing. I always think of that scene with the houses on fire. Um, really cool shot. Anyways, so a lot of good stuff there. I mean, you got the famous line, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I mean, uh, what a great line that Clark Gable just totally nails at the end there. Uh, on Vivian Lee, who you hate throughout the whole movie. She is terrible to everybody. And it's nice when he gives her that, like, you know, screw you, you know, <laughs> um, to, to, to your main character, one of your main characters. Um, now, why do I have it this low? It is a boring movie. <laughs> It is almost four hours long. It's, I think, about the longest movie I've ever watched. And, yeah, there are chunks that are just really slow-moving, boring. Um, and you just hate the main character. Vivian, or, um, Scarlett Harris is just a terrible character <laughs> on purpose. I mean, you're supposed to, I think, hate her. And so it's really hard watching it and going, man, I'm, I spent all this time with this character I don't like. And it's really an unhappy movie. Like, even the ending is just very unsatisfying to me, very unhappy. Lots of people uh, get killed. Uh, that makes you sad. And it's like, uh, there's just nothing. The ending doesn't really satisfy me at all. And there's not enough there for me. And like I said, I, I, I've, saw, I've watched it once. I'll probably never watch it again just because I don't want to sit through that again. Epic movie, lots of great stuff there. Just not for me. So that's um, Gone with the Wind, number 52 on my list. Number 51, pr another pretty big movie, actually, now I think about it. Um, this is On the Waterfront from 1954. Um, I think Elix Zan um, directing here. Um, and this was a big vehicle for Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando is like the biggest actor of the 1950s. 
Um, he kind of explodes on the scene in 1951 with a streetcar named Desire, uh, which is interesting because that's Vivian Lee, one's, um, best, one's her second best actress for that in 1951. Uh, Carl Malden, who's also in um, On the Waterfront, who's a great actor, great performance. He also was in um, Streetcar Named Desire and won Best Point Actor. Anyways, and Marlon Brando was nominated for Best Actor, but didn't win, which is crazy. Because I think On the, uh, um, sorry, um, Streetcar Named Desire, I think, is Marlon Brando's best acting performance. And I think one of the best acting performances I've ever seen in a movie. Like, if you want to see an actor, watch Streetcar Named Desire. That's... I mean, that's a real actor there, Marlon Brando. And, of course, he kind of famously brought in the whole method acting idea, um, you know, uh, really becoming that character and everything that really kind of took on and really exploded, I think, even in the 70s even more. But he definitely kind of brought that idea of the method acting, I feel like, and was kind of big on the scene, you know. He does Streetcar Named Desire. And he did, like, three or four movies where he was nominated for Best Actor. I mean, he had this huge run where every year he was nominated for Best Actor. We finally get to this movie, On the Waterfront, and he wins the Oscar for Best Actor. Um, it's not even one of my favorite performances of his. It's, a, it's an all right performance. And it's not a movie that I'm totally crazy about. It's not one I've like gone back to watch. It's really just about, you know, the union and uh, corruption in, in, in the union job or whatever on the dock. And someone gets murdered and, and they're covering it up. And Brian Brando's character is kind of, you know, helping out the bad guys. But yeah, he feels bad about it. And his brother, older brother, played by Rod Steiger, another great actor, um, you know, is kind of high up in 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 the in that job or whatever, and so he has to play nice, but yet he wants to help out this other girl who's uh, I forget exactly the the plot, but it's, I think it's someone related to her dies, and so he kind of falls in love with her. Anyway, so he's kind of you know what should he do? Should he help the union bad people or you know turn good? um that's kind of the movie itself um yeah and the, and the ending's not even really that satisfying i mean i guess he wins a victory in the end um by going to work i guess even though he gets beat up he still gets up and won't quit i guess that's kind of the idea i don't know if it's quite satisfactory for me um or there's a satisfactory ending to the bad guys lee j cobb plays the main bad guy who's he's great lee j cobb is really good at playing uh jerky bad people uh like this character anyways uh even marie saying great performers i think she wins best point actress if i remember right uh yeah maybe it's one i need to go back to it's just not one i i remember like being totally crazy about even though it was a really popular movie won a lot of oscars if i remember right um yeah not one that i'm totally crazy about for some reason and so that's why it's kind of low on my list not low it's kind of the middle of the my oscar list here at number 51 uh, we got On the Waterfront. All right, my 50th and um, 50th favorite uh, Best Picture winner is Gandhi, the big biopic from 1982 uh, about Mahatma Gandhi, uh, played by Ben Kingsley, who looks and sounds like Gandhi. I mean, he totally transformed himself. And it's a good reason why he won the Oscar for Best Actor. Because uh, Ben Kingsley doesn't really look like Gandhi, in, but except in this movie, they did everything they could, and he looks exactly like Gandhi, and it's like, wow. That was a great transformation. Obviously, you have to lose a lot of weight and all that. And uh, he takes on the voice and everything. Um, yeah, really good performance, obviously. Um, totally deserving there. I don't know. It's not a movie that I'm totally crazy about. Again, it's a pretty long movie. It's kind of boring. I mean, it's a story of Gandhi, which Gandhi, okay. Like, you know, he, he's one of the most well-known figures of the 20th century, I guess, uh, for his, you know... Uh, um, what do you call it? Instead of um, a non-violent, um, kind of non-violent protest, you know, and uh, you know, it's some commendable stuff there for sure, and all the stuff that he did there, um, you know, trying to get independence. I think from the British was a big thing. Uh, he got some like Ingrid, uh, what's her name, Candace Bergen, I think, believes in here. Young Candace Bergen, also um, Martin Sheen, I believe, is also in here. Um, some small parts, but it's really Kinsley. That's the movie. It's Kingsley playing Gandhi. And fun. I mean, there's some interesting stuff here, but again, it's not one I go back to just because I think it's a little too long. But it definitely, if you haven't seen it, it's worth watching just to get a little more history and kind of learning more about Gandhi. But yeah, that's number 50, Gandhi. Number 49, we got <clears throat> another actually older movie. Um, and we got Mutiny, Mutiny on the Bounty. 
uh, from 1935, One Best Picture. And this is a, another famous book um, that has been ad adapted many times. In fact, there was a one in the 60s starring Marlon Brando in the, late, in the lead uh, role. Uh, but this one, one of the earlier versions, 1935, we got Clark Gable as Fletcher Christian, who's really on fire at this time, because I think he's coming right off of 1934. He won Best Actor um, and a Best Picture winner that I'll talk about later on another stream. Uh, it's higher up on my list. But um, So Clark Gable just winning Best Actor, and now he's doing Meet and Bounty. He was nominated for Best Actor for this as well. So, I mean, he was on a big role where he was nominated almost every movie. And then he gets to 1939, of course, and does Gone, uh, does Gone with the Wind. So, I mean, 30s was just huge for Clark Gable. And I like Clark Gable. He's, I think, a really good actor, a uh, really fun actor to watch during this time period. Um, Charles Lawton also is so good as, as a Captain Bly, the, the, the jerk captain that you just love to hate. Um, and I think Charles Lawton is just perfectly cast as that character. Uh, I feel like he, he can do that in a lot of movies I've seen him play that kind of character where he just he plays good jerky type characters uh, and he has kind of an interesting look to him that just fit that character so well I think uh, but yeah it's just a classic story of um, being on this boat and the captain is being very cruel to the to the um, crew and then uh, Christian doesn't want a mutiny at first but then eventually gets pushed over the edge and then starts a mutiny uh, and they're on the island, and then um, Bly goes back to get more ships to come get him. And it's really not a really good ending. Like it comes, the ending is like very like not happy really at all to be honest. Not much of a victory won at the end. Uh, but I will say I do like um, the performances. Like I said, Charles Lawton's great, Clark Gable's great. You know, it's an okay story made into a movie. Uh, it's not one I go back to though. Again, it's not one that I get totally excited to watch. Um, and it's, you know, it seems like a story that's been done before, but yeah, so that's number 49, Mutiny on the Bounty. Number 48, another absolutely huge movie that definitely will be in the top 10 on a lot of people's list. I've just never been totally crazy about this one. This is Casablanca, or Casablanca from 1942. Yeah, Casablanca, absolutely huge movie. Uh, yeah, um, what you say, classic movie, Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman, it's, kind of um, film noir style, you know, movie that set during, you know, Nazi occupation, World War II era, and uh, we're in Casablanca, and Humphrey Bogart, uh, I think his name's Sam, or what's his, I can't remember, remember his name now, uh, but he is, uh, no, play against Sam, that's the piano player, um, but he is, um, runs a bar, Rick, his name's Rick, I believe, is Rick's bar, and then this ex-lover comes into play, and, you know, of all the bars and joints, she has to come in this one. Uh, so many great lines. It's been maybe one of the best movies for quoting lines. It's had so many classic lines in it, you know. Um, and so then she's like trying to, her husband, they're, they're you know, of course, anti, you know, the Nazis and all this and all this political stuff going on. And of course, Rick is just, you know, heartbroken because she broke his heart long ago. They were in Paris and they were in love. And she left him anyways. And so he still has a lot of anger, toward, bitterness towards all that. But yet he wants to help her and her cause. Anyways, you know, that's kind of the basic plot of the, of the movie. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, the performances are great. Huffy Bogart should have won Best Actor for this role. In fact, when I remember watching it and thinking, like, uh, I love how when you see him at first, he's just so miserable looking all the time. He's just always frowning. He's always, you know... Uh, hot-tempered kind of and then when you see the back uh, the scenes um, with him when he's in love with um, Ingrid Berman's character and they're in Paris and he's like so happy so joyful it's like I was like wow he made me totally feel different about that character through his performance like I believe him as the brick the bitter kind of person and then I believe him as kind of the happy and love guy so I always thought wow he put on a really good performance there really shocking he didn't win best actor but um, you know, it's an okay movie. It's maybe one I need to watch again. I've seen it a couple of times and I was, I don't know, just kind of bored with the movie. Uh, it's kind of a slow moving movie to me. Uh, I don't know. I don't quite get the hype of it as uh, it's so popular, but uh, again, it's not a bad movie at all. It's just not one I've ever been excited about. So I put it here kind of in the middle of my list um, at number 48. Number 47, I have a movie that's not as well known. Um, 
And this is called Going My Way from 1944. As far as Bean Crosby as this um, young kind of priest come into this parish uh, and the school, and it's kind of in the school that's being run. And Barry Fitzgerald plays kind of the main priest that's the head of the school, I think, uh, if I remember right. And the school's like having trouble, financial trouble, and they need to figure a way to keep it from, you know, getting uh, bought or something, getting, they have to give it up or whatever. And Bing Crosby, of course, is this great, you know, lovable character who's a great singer because Bing Crosby and very likable guy. And he kind of helps, you know, spread this joy to everybody, you know, and helps them out, of course, in the end. Um, overall, it's a fun movie. It's not bad. It's not a super exciting movie, I would say. Uh, but I do like Bing Crosby a lot. Like, I love him in White Christmas. And uh, he actually wins Best Actor for this role. I think, I forget his name, Father O'Malley. I don't want to say that. I'm not be right. Um, but he wins the best actor for this role. I don't think it's a great performance necessarily, but I think people just really liked him. And he does, he is likable in the movie. I think that's what you like about that character and his performance. Um, so I do like Bing Crosby here. Barry Fitzgerald, very good, um, kind of character, Irish character actor. Uh, interesting enough, Barry, Barry Fitzgerald <clears throat> was nominated for best actor and best supporting actor in the same movie. The first time and the last time it's ever been done because they they changed that. But yeah, only time that's been done where a guy gets nominated for two different roles or same role, same movie, two different Oscars, best actor, best supporting actor. He ends up winning best supporting actor. That's how popular or how much they liked him in the movie, I guess. How good he is here. So best actor, best supporting actor for the movie plus best picture. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice, fun kind of like hard comedy, a little music in it. Uh, I think, anyways, but not like a big dramatic movie that you would think would win Best Picture, but this is 1944. It's a little bit different. I will say the next, the sequel that comes out the next year, The Bells of St. Mary, I think is a much better movie, and I would have had that win Best Picture, especially going up against The Lost Weekend, which I said it was really low on my list. I didn't like The Lost Weekend. Bells of St. Mary, definitely check that movie out. Uh, going my way, definitely you check that out too, but Bells of St. Mary, I think, is much better. Ingrid Bergman's in it, playing a nun. Uh, it's a really good movie. Anyways, but yeah, so going my way. Number 47. So the last movie I'm going to talk about, number 46, another huge movie that's in the top 10 of everybody's list, but not mine. And that is Lawrence of Arabia uh, from 1962. Another absolutely huge, epic movie. Very long. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Telling, telling the true story of T. Lawrence. Um, uh, real life character. So it's a real kind of based on true story, I guess. A, a British officer who goes... And helps the Arabs like win independence or, or something like that. If I remember right, I'm not getting all that maybe correct, but um, obviously, uh, you know, there's some good stuff here. Like, I think the cinematography is really good, uh, costuming really good. Again, uh, music school musical score great. Love all the sand dunes. Like I said, is really cool. Like when they're um, in the desert area, so it's all very shot very well and everything and. Uh, I don't know, it's just too long of a movie again. I say it again and again, but yeah, it's like a three-hour movie, I think. It does take a while to get into. It's I'm sure it's very well shot. I know Spielberg loves this movie. He talks so highly of it, but I don't know. To me, I just I just get bored. I don't, I'm not as crazy about the character as most people are. And um, it doesn't really have that great of an ending to me. I, I don't remember being that satisfied by the ending and thinking, oh, wow, that was a great ending to this epic movie or, or whatever. Um I don't know. I'm just kind of, uh, and again, I probably won't watch it again just because it's so long. It's kind of boring. Uh, and I know I hate saying that because I know it's a classic, but that's just me. Um, but I totally get people love this movie. Uh, it's got a lot of good stuff to it, like I said. But yeah, number 46 on my list, Lawrence of Arabia. So that is the 10 there, 55 to 46. Feel free to tell me where I'm wrong because I'm sure I am wrong on some of these. Like I said, these are some huge movies. Probably should be higher on my list, but Eh, just me. That's the way I feel at the time. Anyway, so yeah, tell me what movies you like out of this list. Love to read your comments. And appreciate everybody um, liking this video. I appreciate everybody watching it, of course. And I appreciate all my subscribers for supporting the channel. I really appreciate you guys. I hope you have a good day.